the latest. Good morning, John. Let's once again begin with the numbers of those who have been confirmed killed. We know that there were 157 people on board. Nobody has survived. We have that now from various representatives of the government and the airline itself. Here are some of the critical numbers that we're looking at. 32 Kenyans killed, but then the second highest number of fatalities comes from Canada. 18 Canadians have been killed as a result of that crash that took place between Addis Ababa and Nairobi that left at 8 38 this morning. A number of Ethiopians, Americans, Chinese, Italians, and uh, seven people from the UK and from France, and the list goes on from there. Let's show you images that are just coming in of grieving family members who are waiting at the Nairobi airport. They were waiting to greet their loved ones, their friends, their business partners coming home, uh, coming for a visit. But unfortunately, they've all been met with the worst possible news that the plane has crashed and there, there are no survivors. We also have images of the crash site itself as there are a number of crews there working there trying to gather up all the debris. We've unfortunately seen enough of these types of crashes over the past few years to know what the investigation, how it will move forward. All that evidence will be gathered. They'll try and reconstruct as much of the scene and the plane as they can. They'll try and move the bodies out of the way. And of course, critical to all of this will be the black box, the orange box, if they can find it, the recording devices to find out exactly what could have gone wrong. And so we know that we've got representatives from every single continent uh, on board uh, that flight. Possibly the reason that there was such a diversity of nationalities on board the flight was because there's a UN conference that's about to take place in Nairobi on environmental issues. So we don't know for certain if all the people were destined for that uh, particular conference, but certainly it might help to explain why so many people were traveling on that flight between such a short distance, about six hours travel between uh, Addis Ababa and Nairobi. Continue to watch. The, the flight was only in the air for about six minutes before it crashed. John. This happening not too many hours ago, but uh, as it moves forward, are we learning anything about the cause of the crash, Natasha? We might be getting a hint, and this is coming from the CEO of Ethiopian Airlines, who said that the pilot of the flight did call back and say that he was experiencing difficulties and had asked to bring the plane back to Addis Ababa. Unfortunately, we know the plane did not make its way back. So what were those difficulties? Was he personally not feeling healthy? Was there some issue there? Was there a disruption on the flight or was there a technical error? So we need to figure that out. We don't have a bit of clarity on that point, but it's worth noting that this Boeing 737 was a relatively new plane just delivered to Ethiopian Airlines in November. But unfortunately, in the past few months, we ha this is not the first Boeing 37, uh, 737 that we've reported on that has had um, a fatal incident where it has crashed. So we'll just continue to watch. Again, just want to stress, we don't know what caused the crash. We can confirm that all 157 are dead who were on board, including 18 Canadians. Thanks, Natasha. You're welcome. Well, Keith Mackey is a former airline captain and president of the aviation safety consulting firm Mackey Aviation. He says that the plane's two black boxes, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder, will be key in pinpointing the cause of today's crash. Everyone is comparing this accident to the one in uh, October of last year involving Lion Air in Jakarta, where the same type of airplane was involved in an accident shortly after takeoff. Of course, people will be looking for any similarities between the two accidents. But uh, uh, we really have no link to bring them together uh, other than that they happen shortly after takeoff. The first step is looking for those boxes. And once we get the boxes and find out what actually has happened, then we'll know where in the wreckage to look. Uh, we'll look at everything initially. We'll get the radar tracks, the, uh, the tape, the pilot communication, and the investigators will try to piece all these things together to come up with any clues as to what happened. And I'm quite confident eventually we will discover the cause of the crash. 